Welcome everybody to today's service at St. Peter's and our joint service with Christ Church because we are Episcopalians together in Oxford. We are glad that you have joined us. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you to join in singing hymn number 66, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. chapter 13. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give out its light. The stars will be falling from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and great glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth, and to the ends of heaven. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert. You do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midday, or at cockcrow, or at dawn. Or else, he will come and find you asleep when he comes suddenly, and I say to you all, keep awake. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May these words be spoken and heard in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, it is the first Sunday of Advent, and I will tell you that I just love Advent. I always have. I love the Advent hymns, I love the Advent wreath, I love the sense of expectation that this church season brings. But, to be honest, I would have to say that I also dread Advent. Why? Because it means I've only got four little weeks to get my Christmas act together. Eek! 
presents to buy and wrap, cookies to bake, decorating to do, Christmas cards to write and mail. I'm exhausted just thinking about it. And that is why the collect for the first Sunday of Advent is so important to me. It was written almost 500 years ago for the first English Book of Common Prayer, but it is so relevant to my life today that it might have been written yesterday. This prayer recalls to me what Advent and Christmas are really all about, which is not, of course, gifts and cookies, but something far more important and lasting. Give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. So in one beautifully crafted sentence, this prayer celebrates both the first coming of Christ as the baby in the manger and his second coming at the end of time, which will be in glorious majesty as our judge. And in a few short words, it shows us the difference that he can make in our lives right now today and also the difference that he is going to make in our lives at the end of time. And I don't know about you, but this is certainly a perspective that I need as I enter this hectic season and perhaps you do too. The birth of the baby Jesus, the Son of God, brought the power of God right into our world. And it made a difference in human life, like the difference between day and night, the difference between light and darkness, the difference between being trapped in dark rags or clothed in shining armor. Jesus offers you and me deliverance from darkness, not just at the last day, but right now, here and now, in our daily lives, here, as the prayer says, in this mortal life. Are you hurting? Then he can comfort and heal you with the power of his love. Are you afraid? He wants to give you courage beyond your own with his own strength. Are you broken hearted? He wants to give you hope in the new life that he offers to you. You see, the power of Christ in us is power not to escape from the darkness of the world, God knows it is not immunity from suffering and fear, but when he lives in you, any darkness you face cannot destroy you because the God who raised Jesus from the dead is stronger than any power in the universe, stronger than any darkness. And our responsibility, the collect suggests, is to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. So what actually does that mean? Certainly, yes, it means to turn away from sin and to align yourself with the light of Christ, which shows us through the Bible, that there is a better way to live than doing whatever the heck you feel like. But beyond that, I think it also means to say no, to refuse to give in to the darkness, 
to the pain and fear and despair and hopelessness that can so easily overwhelm us in the difficult times of our lives. And instead of giving in to the darkness, to call upon the light of Christ, which is in every believer, to help us to overcome. God is greater than the darkness, and you can trust him to fight for you. That is truly to know the transforming power of Christ in your life now, today. But Advent is not about just about looking back at the birth of Christ, but also looking forward to his second coming in glorious majesty. And you and I, as believers, can have confidence that at the end of time, Christ will raise us to the life immortal. And honestly, sometimes I think that is the most important hope of all. When you face a problem that cannot be solved on this earth, the death of a loved one or estrangement from someone you love or failure that can't be redeemed, when you face a problem like that, then you can still look to the day that is coming, the Bible tells us so, when every tear will be wiped away in the kingdom of God. Advent reminds us that that day is coming. We don't know when it's coming. It could be today, it could be tomorrow, it could be a thousand years from now. We don't know. But it is coming. So on this first Sunday of Advent in the year of our Lord 2020, it is still true that Christmas will be here in just a few weeks. But whether all the holiday chores get done or not, there will still be a reason for rejoicing because the birth of the Christ child gives you and me a way to live in this present time even in these COVID times, under the protection of the light and the hope for the time to come when we will enjoy life everlasting. Amen. Amen. That's one of my top five sermons that Ellen preaches that I love. Okay. Prayers to the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Remembering the transition in the presidency taking place now, we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. O oh Lord, give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Remembering those who are sick and suffering from COVID and those who mourn the loss of loved ones who have died to it and remembering those who care for them. And we ask that you have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who've entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We now can pray for our own needs and those of others. Father of all mercies, I lift up to your throne of grace those in the St. Peter's family who are in need of your healing. Bill, Shirley, 
Donna, Charlie. Lord, we lift up those in need of healing from Christ Church's family. Patty, Michael, Richard, and all others in need of God's care. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is the moment in our service when we exchange the peace with one another. If you are watching this while sitting alone, I want to remind you that you are not alone. If you are there, then the Lord is there because he is in you. And so you can exchange the peace with him. And others of you who are sitting with others as you watch this may exchange the peace with one another. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. This is the point in our service when we lift up our offerings, your offerings, to the Lord for his blessing and the use of his church. As always, we want to thank the members of both Christ Church and St. Peter's for your faithfulness in giving financially to your church. It has made a huge difference in our ability to continue to do ministry in your behalf, and we are very grateful. And there's one thing we'd like to also lift up in this plate, but he's too big for it, and that's Don Peck. We thank him for his just very loyal and dependable work. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. He's our hero. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Amen. We do have a kid's story today. It's on Advent, and you will find it on the web page saying kid's story, the key right after the service key for this week. And our service concludes with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray, saying together, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with the unending life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and upon all those you love and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. One announcement that I have, and actually it can apply to St. Peter's too, we are gonna be having a video Christmas pageant that the kids and their teachers are gonna be working on. It, it promises to be exciting and safe. So if you would like to uh, participate, there's information on Facebook or in the emails we send out or you can just call and leave a message and we'll get back to you at 203-888-4936.
And for St. Peter's, I just want to remind you that we will be doing the giving tree minus the tree this year for the benefit of Miriam Rodriguez and her family. Um, I am hoping that this week we will be able to send out a list of all, the wish list of all the presents that those kids would like. It's made a huge difference in their life for the last two years and I know it will again this year. And now I invite you to join in singing hymn number 56, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Now for the dismissal, let us go forth in the name of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia.